Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today we're releasing a very special episode uh, that we recorded back in August with two of my best friends, um, which I've had a long journey with over 25 years or so. Um, their names are Mike Eagle and Terry Rader. Uh, shortly after we uh, did this in August, uh, Mike suddenly passed away. And so this episode is in his memoriam. Enjoy. Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today, we are graced with the presence of two of my best friends in life, in uh, Mike Eagle and Terry Rader. Uh, welcome, guys, to the Blue Rain Gallery. Nice well, to be here. Nice to brother. <laughs> um, I think what we'd like to do today is, is talk about our journey uh, with these two gentlemen and, and our journey, meaning Blue Rain Gallery and, and these two gentlemen. Um, when I first met uh, Mike and Terry, uh, Terry was practicing law in uh, Detroit as a copyright patent attorney, uh, head litigator of his law firm. And Mike Eagle was the uh, vice president of uh, Lilly Pharmaceuticals. Uh, through both of these gentlemen, uh, Blue Rain uh, developed a pretty good relationship with Eli, Eli Lilly and also the Idle Jordan Museum. And uh, in fact, uh, what we're, why we're talking to them today is that between these two and a third gentleman who's not with us anymore in Mel Perlman, uh, they no donated one of the biggest contemporary Kachina collections uh, in the United States, probably to the Idle Jorg. And those dolls can be seen uh, at any time at the Idle Jorg. They're on display and they're beautiful. They're some of the best carvings uh, ever made. Um, <clears throat> let's start with, uh, with Mike Eagle. Mike. Uh, Maybe you could tell us how you got started in collecting. Yeah. Let's hear that. Yeah, and then we'll ask Terry. So Terry, you'd be thinking about yeah. your, your journey. Yeah, we've been talking about that. Good. <laughs> okay. My, my daughter was in the fourth grade in, in a private school. And the, the instructor for the private school had friends in some of the Indian nations. And so they took the fourth graders and took them on a week-long st story. And... My daughter had been studying and she, what she wanted to get when she got out there was a black on black pot. That's what she wanted more than anything. She called us while they were on the trip and she said, dad, I got it. It was only $18. And I thought that was a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Compared to <laughs> I, 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 I didn't know anything about Native American art, you know, but she had studied up on it. And by the way, she's got a lovely collection at home now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so they come home and we go to pick her up and she walks off the bus. And I said, that's it? <laughs> that's all? So to make a long story short, that one got the whole thing started. So we now refer to it as the million dollar pot. Nice. And you sent me a picture. We'll be posting that. Yep. Yep. We sent you a couple of pictures. Right. Yeah. And that'll, that'll be fine. So holding it in their hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's good for skill. Yeah. But if I can go on a little bit is she liked it so much, my daughter, that we took her on vacation back again, came out here. She wanted to go other places and see more things. And she started picking out pieces that she wanted to have. And it, that went on for 30 years. She and, must have quite the collection at this yeah, point. Well, you know, I have maybe 25 pieces left in my house, which, which my new wife has fell in love with all of them. Mm -hmm. um, but Melody, my daughter, still has these beautiful things. And they're, they're rearranging their living room now so they make better. You know, right. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, that's wonderful. What about you, Terry? What, well, what's your my, story? My story begins with uh, actually... Uh, collecting rocks, uh, which I did for several years. And, uh, and then Mike Eagle and I uh, went to uh, Lake Powell, and we also ended up uh, uh, making a trip while we were there to Flagstaff. And that was my first introduction into what happens in acquiring uh, art. 
specifically, there was this museum that had its annual expose there. On the 4th of July. On the 4th of July. And uh, so being a novice to all this, I had no idea to what to expect except that there were all these older people lined up in their nice outfits and so forth in front of this door. It was a large group. All of a sudden, the doors open up and these people go rushing into the gallery and they're all picking up these little dots. That's my first uh, my first contact oh, with the dots. Red ones. Red dots, which became a historical part of our, both yes. of our lives. I, I, I don't, I'm laughing because we'll get to that. That's funny. So, yeah. so in that particular, so uh, we ended up acquiring three pieces, very modest pieces. Uh, and... Uh, we had also gone to... Were they pots? Three pots? or They were three pots. Actually, uh, one of the first pieces that... Uh, and I apologize for not remembering her name, but we, we could talk about that later. But anyway, the point is that when we got back to Michigan, of course, they all had been shipped. And, uh, and so I started mixing them in with the rocks. Well, then, of course, it just blossomed after that but we we began um uh, really in in that fashion it just became a passion after that yeah okay so let's let's uh fast forward to when was the first time you came to blue rain or when was the first time that i met you do you remember i'll start with that my first contact with you was uh every year when we came to indian market and you're gonna remember this this goes back to Early 90s. Uh, we were trying to es estimate when it, our first Indian market was, and it's about uh, 1990, maybe 89. Eight, 89. It was 89. 89. Probably is more accurate. Um, and at that time, we would go to Gallery 10, which uh, the night before uh, market back then, they would have their open house and uh, there were uh, every year Al Q pots Al Koyawama yes mm -hmm. who I still love we both love and yeah. and, and Richard as well and Richard, Richard. Yeah. and there were other uh, well known artists as well but but the Al Q pots which were probably about 10 he would have they will always be sold yeah so we happened to be in the gallery like normal and complaining about the fact that we were too late again when all of a sudden I saw a pot. It was, it had been moved because it had been sold apparently, but it had been moved to the shelf area and it was like a, a light was on it. Mm -hmm. Like, ah! <laughs> and <laughs> right. without, uh, without a doubt, it was a total eureka moment for me anyway. And, of course, it was, as you know, uh, one of Tammy Garcia's pots. And once I saw that, it was, it was all over. I was done with, uh, with thinking about, uh, although I ended up with several Al Q pots, over the years, but but uh, that, Tammy's Tammy's pottery became my my obsession. That that pot really sent uh, shockwaves through the market. Even though it wasn't even Indian market, it would have been best of show for sure. Um, and it, it was a pot that was purchased by um, Leonard Bernstein and Barbara Bernstein of California. And I need to ask them for that picture too, because uh, that's that just was a beautiful pot because it was the first time I think that Tammy had done a full polychrome without the white fill in. And it was a it was a pretty significant size piece. And uh, I still remember the impact of that pot. And so that's, that's interesting. Uh, what about you, Mike? Well, we have to start off with, we always were together. Yes, yes. And we often- Partners in crime. <laughs> we often debated and fought over, that's mine. No, that's yours. No, no, that's that. We loved the same things. Mm -hmm. And I can remember what coming up to Taos 
and you were moving around quite a bit, you know, from your dad's home to, to uh, Plaza. other other places. Mm -hmm. And that's when we really met you and we knew you were married to her. And then I remembered you, she didn't have a booth. She had some stuff in um, Gallery 10. Gallery 10. Mm -hmm. And you guys were walking around with your new baby in a stroller. And I came up to you and I said, is there any way that Tammy could make one for me? And you thought about it for a minute and she said, well, we owe Al one. Maybe I can talk him into giving it to her for me. And it turned out to be a nice black one with four eagles, four eagles. Medallions. Right? Yeah, without anything else. Mm -hmm. And that became my very first one. It was a significant first one because oh, <laughs> it was a large format. Too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All black. Um, okay. So uh, that's the first introduction to uh, Blue Rain Gallery. Um, tell me about the third party here that's not here in Mel Perlman. Uh, what would happen when you guys are at market, the three of you? Well, let me tell you who Mel was. Okay. He was vice president of Eli Lilly and Company. Mm -hmm. And he was collecting art already, Western art. Western. Yep. And he had a sense of humor that would just drive you crazy. Yes, <laughs> we would just laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and we got a lot of those stories we yes. could tell. But Mel and us, and we all became friends. And, you know, when we would go to the Indian market at the Idle Jar, we'd, we'd spend the, all the time together. Um Mel, Mel was a great guy, both for the pharmaceutical industry, but also for art. Yes. And um, we spent a lot of time with him. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it wasn't good because he said, I already bought that. <laughs> <laughs> he was so competitive. <laughs> um, one, one time at market opened up. And I saw Mel talking to one of the carvers the night before. And you're not supposed to Correct. buy anything until 7 a.m. the next morning. So I got out there and this thing I wanted that I saw Mel looking at, I asked the, the carver, did, did, I thought you sold this. He said, no, I didn't sell it. I said, okay, I'll take it. So I'm writing a check and I hear Mel coming down. And he says, what are you doing, Mike? <laughs> I said, I'm buying this Kachina. And he says, oh, this will be the last time I ever stopped to shave before coming out to market. <laughs> <laughs> then when I was gone, he told the guy, build one twice as big as Mike's. <laughs> Did you remember who the car was? Was it Bo? Who was that carver? I, I can't remember. It was just, it's been a while, but yeah, it was competitive like that the it whole was, it time. Was, it was very competitive. Yeah. So, so, so those two together, the one I got and the one Mel got <laughs> in the museum, <laughs> they're standing together. Oh, nice. <laughs> so another quick story, hopefully we can tell, was uh, being at uh, Mel's home. <laughs> and uh, the reason this story is... Uh, important. Yeah, you're going to give the whole context of this first. Right? I'm going to just give you a little <laughs> preface, not much. But the reason that uh, this becomes important is because when we were at the Idle Jorg Indian Market, uh, one of the carvers, um, Bo Lamakwa, had uh, pieces there. And uh, all three of us liked one of the three pieces that uh, Bo had at their Indian market. So you had three people that wanted the same doll. And all three type A personalities. And we picked on the wrong person. And so what, <laughs> what we did was, all of a sudden Mel says, okay, I'll buy it for X dollars. He increased the price about $1,000 above what he was asking what Bo was asking. It's just not fair. Mike immediately <laughs> says, Mel, that's, you're using the wrong technique here. This is not, this is not, you know, you've got to stay with the ethics of, of uh, acquiring things. So anyway, the um, doll gets sold for uh, the increased price, but there were a couple other pieces. So 
I went uh, back, uh, took a few moments to think about this, and later that day, I went over to where Bo was, and there's Mel again. And I was going to buy one of the other pieces. Mel was there. He had already gotten that piece as well. <laughs> because what he did then with Bo was he, he paid him more for the one piece to get around you guys. Mike and I. Mm -hmm. And then he paid, and then he got a, a discount on the, on the second. Oh, he made up for it on he the second one. Oh, my gosh. Piece. <laughs> that sounds anyway funny. those kinds of those kinds of stories continued on for several years uh, different things he was and for the idol joy museum his contributions were very significant so uh, before you get into the story of his house and dots uh, where did that idea come from well the dots part was um, of course, well known. Everybody knows about the dots. So we go to Mel's. Well, home. no, nobody knows about the dots except for you. So tell me the story about well, the I'm dots. Well, I'm going to tell you about the dots. <laughs> but the idea of using dots yes. to, to buy things is, yeah, is well yeah. known. So in advance of we, this trip. We, we stopped at a s store. And, and Mike buys a package of dots. A package of like red dots. Red dots. Right? <laughs> and Terry says, what are those for? You'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to the we get to the. Uh, and of course, Mel had all his art on display, and it was a very uh, major thing. And um, at the end, uh, Mike and I went around and we put dots, red dots on everything, <laughs> yeah, on a lot of things, everything. And then to just make sure he understood how happy we were with him about this story that I told you about from Ma Indianapolis. Ma uh, we, I went ahead and put three dots on his uh, Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> it was his wife's Mercedes. Oh, oh, his yeah. wife's Mercedes. Oh, right. don't mess with Joan, man. <laughs> and we did it as we were leaving the house. So, <laughs> so you can get away? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> well, I always remember the, the passion that you guys have had for art and collecting to the point where you guys would uh, sleep outside the gallery and maybe one time or so inside the gallery? It was very cold that night. We were, <laughs> we were, we were helping you. We came back from the, the dinner. Right. And we were helping you hang things for the next day. And there were some people in lounges and, and baskets getting ready to sleep outside. And it must have been 35 degrees. It's Taos. Yeah. It's cold. It's, yeah. So... So we finished everything, and you were closing up, and he said, Mike and Terry, and there was a lady, too. I said, why don't you just come inside here and sleep on the floor? We did, but we had to tell Terry, you got to go to the other side of the house because we are snoring. <laughs> <laughs> don't wake the bear. Don't poke the bear. <laughs> so we all, we all slept in there until morning. In the gallery floor. In the gallery floor. <laughs> so, Except for Terry on the other side of the gallery. Yeah. Well, the other part of that story and, and the other companion story is the fact that uh, we were one and two. Right. On the purchasing of the pots. and uh, which How did you guys work that out? Who got number one and who got number two? Because you were up there in the same. He jumped on me. <laughs> <laughs> But, but the pots were, uh, uh, you'll recall, they were, uh, the two pots that we actually acquired were very significant pots. And, uh, and of course, even that story is preceded by, I, I stayed literally all night yes. for one of Tammy's pots when she was uh, doing that. Right. And... Uh, and so it, that was also another one where I was number one, mm -hmm. so I could make the first pick. And that was legitimate. Yeah. He asked Bob Esselstein to run back to the hotel and get a chair <laughs> <laughs> on Thursday. And then Bob brings it over and he sits on that chair for three days. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he was number one. People, people have a hard time understanding what was happening there. But in, in those years, um, Tammy Garcia, well, Tammy sold out for like 23 years like that. Straight. Amazing. And uh, so people would spend the night in front of the gallery or 
the booth at the plaza in advance of trying to get a Tammy pot. Uh, it was it was really hard because she'd only make maybe eight pots and there'd be like three, five hundred people who want them. And that's why there was this uh, pent up demand and the, the reality of waiting in line for days at a time to get a to get a piece. And you guys were in line with a lot of famous people, <laughs> which is uh, interesting. You know, the the grandson of William Randolph Hearst was one of those guys that was sleeping out there with you and for a few other billionaires for, for several years later. They referred to each other as number one and, and number, number two. two. Uh, <laughs> they didn't even know his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys were, you guys were, and you still are to me, number one and number two. Uh, and it, it, it got to the point where they would, they would be. I'd open the door and they'd be there, and I just hand them a, a book of dots. <laughs> I just said, put your initials and get what you want. And uh, it, away we went. We had a, we had a lot of fun and. Uh, I remember also um, the Idol Jorg was preparing. You guys had all committed your collections. And um, uh, John Van Dalsdell, uh interviewed, uh, I, think, I think Mel was there too. I think it was you, you and Mel and me and Tammy. And, uh, and it, you know, Tammy's career was still going on the rise. And uh, I, I was trying to compare it to, you know, a contemporary artist that's really above level. And I was comparing it to uh, Howard Turpening. And um, it was hard to comprehend that, but it was, you know, she really pushed those levels to almost that point in the pottery world. Uh, her prices almost reached the $200,000 level and it was just amazing. Uh, but the fact that you guys had a, a vision uh, about her work and helped elevate to those points, uh, that was pretty incredible. A lot of people came to it after the fact. Like, wow, we got to pay attention to this artist. Yeah. And, uh, but you guys always had great taste, uh, not just in pottery, but in the Kachina dolls itself. More than that. Paintings. Oh, yeah. Paintings and jewelry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A.Q. Yeah. Al Q. Who is your favorite painter? Ramus Painter. Who is your favorite painter? Tony Abedo. Yeah. Yep. Well, don't, we, both of us also like Frank Howe. Right. Oh, there was Frank, was too. Yeah, yeah. I still have several of those at home. You still have some prank house. And, uh, but you had a lot more of the Tony and Betas than anything oh, else. By far. In large format and uh, uh, really enjoyed his uh, creativity. Guy's a genius as well, as far as, as, far as painting. Um, what was your intention in, in donating so much uh, to the Idol Trick as far as the Kachinas? You know, I, I, I moved to Indianapolis uh, to become vice president of Eli Lilly and Company. And I was on the board of the Idol Jorg for 12 years. And when they went through a big expansion after it was about halfway old, mm -hmm. you know, Mel and his wife put in $5 million. I put in a lot of money too. But when I retired and I needed to get rid of all that thing. I, when I say get rid of, I had to downsize, I had to move. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to John, I talked to a lot of those people there. They came out to look at it and look at the stuff. They didn't take it all. So some of it I kept. A few other pieces I sent to the the Arizona, or no, the... Um, the herd? No, not the herd. In oh, Grief, Griffith Park. Oh, okay. In Los Angeles. Oh. You know, where G that was his, what was it? Gene Wayne. Gene, yeah. Oh, to the Autry. To the Autry. Okay. So I, don I donated about 20 pieces and I let them pick them. And they were very happy about that. Um, but I just felt like all the effort that I put into the Idle Jorg, you know, in expanding it uh you know i was you guys helped through that big rebuild uh right. or their expansion Abs absolutely right? a lot of money was donated and by the way they're getting to do another one. Oh, great and i'm going to help them again oh wonderful yeah yeah well my my uh uh reason actually started we mike to begin with was uh it, it, along with john uh then Oslo, um, we're, you know, partnering. And so Mark, Mike got me involved with the idol jorg. And once I got involved with the idol jorg, uh, 
uh, of course, Mel and Mike and I were also part of the that original contribution yep. that they did and, and the planning that went into that. But uh, my passion, and it was his passion too, uh, with the Kachinas, was to um, try to make something historical at the auto jerk. And in order to do that in the 80s, um, I went ahead and gave uh, our, my entire collection of Kachinas. Yeah. But at that point in time that I did that, um, there was no, you could still maintain possession of them until later. Right. They changed that during the time. So then I started meeting their requirements of, of we would have a certain percentage. That, that's based on the IRS. Correct. Right? And, and so we don't need to get into the details of that other than to say that it was the intent because of both of us. And Mike was going to do the same thing, which he did. And Mel. Too. And Mel. And, Mel. and but it was, we were talking earlier about this competitiveness. Well, the three of us um, also concluded that, uh, that it would make sense. I just got into it first. And then Mel did, he was doing some. And then, and then of course, more recently, Mike. But all of the, Kachinas now that are at the Idle Jerk are over 300. Between the three of you guys? Between the three of us. And I bet uh, you're closer to 400. It's probably, I, I say it's over 300 because I don't know exactly what, I know what, what our, my collection was and, yeah. and I know yeah. generally what Mike's collection was. Yeah, it was Mel's, closer to 400. Yeah, Mel's, I, I don't know. But the point is that uh, now, the Kachinas uh, that they have at the Idle Jerk, uh, in my opinion, exceed what um, uh, was contributed of the old style Kachinas to the uh, herd by uh, Barry Goldwater. Goldwater. Yeah. Uh, and this is even more significant because of the caliber of dolls you guys are collecting. Oh, they're, I mean, they're, you're collecting Tammy Garcia, but you're in the equal plane on the Kachinas. You were doing all the upper echelon. Yeah, one, one, of, one of the Kachinas that they have is um, uh, Bo Lamakawa did. I don't think there's anything been done like it ever. It stands seven feet tall. It's four separate Kachinas that are standing on top of each other and the uppermost Kachina is holding a uh, the earth towards the sky. It's magnificent. Yeah, I, I've seen that. It's a beautiful doll. I think the the, the first doll that I remember uh, you collecting, uh, well, I, don't, I can't remember which one of you got it, <laughs> but it was that Stetson Eagle, the, the first major eagle that, that Stetson carved for us. Uh, that was that yours yes oh man that was just beautiful too well they've know? used that the auto jerk has used that particular one in various advertising publications uh, mm -hmm. and and so forth on that mike acquired um from um uh, the big one that you acquired that we were just Bo, talking about Bo. it wasn't it was, it was not Bo. just Bo, but it was the wilmer k was oh, another one. The artist that passed this year from COVID. Well, uh, Marlon Pinto. Marlon Pinto. That was a nice, the so trading Mark with the Kogil uh, doll. Mike yeah. has a Marlon Pinto that. It, is, no, I is, don't anymore. It's in the Idol Jerk. It's in the Idol Jerk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he he still has the bronze. Though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but anyway, that particular uh, one is very significant as well. Yeah. And, and uh, let me, let me uh, for the audience, describe this doll. It, it's a Kashari. With the black and white stripes and the, the hair, the head with the corn husks. Um, and in the back pocket had chocolate bars. He's holding little Kachina dolls in one hand. And I, it was just a, a fun piece. And we'll pull a picture of that too. But uh, Marlin was the best carver at Azuni ever. And uh, boy, it was life looking, wasn't and it? Especially humor. Yes, humorous. Uh, great sense of humor. And Mel and Terry. 
all tried to get as many as we could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you did. You did a good job. <laughs> I, I got to tell you one story. It just came to my thought. Um, Mal didn't come back to market one time. And I said, well, I'm going. And he said, well, get me a Tammy. I said, okay. So I go home. I, I got it a little one, right, from the lottery. Right. I said, Mal, come on over. I got the Tammy that you wanted. Mike, what are you doing? Are you, are you playing something on me? <laughs> he comes over and he looks at it. And he says, how did you get this one? <laughs> well, I paid for it. That's how. <laughs> so, you also stayed in line and you know, got lucky. That's right. So was, that was another one of those Mel's just, what, what? Yeah. Oh, uh, Mel was always in shock, but he was always trying to figure a way to beat you. <laughs> I remember one time we went to Indianapolis and, um, you had Mel and, and Joan and us, and, and we went to that race car <laughs> thing, right? And, yeah. and, and, and uh, But those guys didn't want to get beat. You had these, like, 75-year-old people just <laughs> in the cars. And, oh, man, we had a blast. It was great. It was great. I think Paponi was there, too. Paponi was there. Yeah. Greg was there. Greg. Mm -hmm. If I remember right, you you had a sore arm or something, so you, you parked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, Joan, Joan drove, uh, drove me off the cliff yeah. over there. <laughs> She ran me off the road. Joan, this was inside a, an old train station. So it was indoors, right? Go cars. And they gave us helmets and soaps, you know, the whole thing. And Joan says, I'm going to whip you guys. Oh, yes. She <laughs> had some attitude. Then I'm like, I'm oh going to whip you guys. And she did. <laughs> I know. But then there's a guy up in a, on a corner and he's you know, kind of keeping an eye on everybody, make sure you know they're doing the right stuff. She makes a U turn and goes back to talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> and he says, ma'am, you got to go that way. <laughs> <laughs> and that was oh, so much fun because Papani was, was there. Greg mm -hmm. was there. It was, it was just fantastic. You know, there's been a real interaction between uh, the three amigos, as we were referred to mm -hmm. by the idol tour. And, and the museum now, it says, there's a picture of us, the three amigos. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get back there and look at that picture. Yeah. They, they, Back in March of last year, they set up a whole dis whole display of it, mixing up, up you know some of the big the ones, collections. some of the little ones, mm -hmm. put them in in, a, in an, uh, an audio room, mm -hmm. and there was rich, uh, pictures of all of us, and my whole family went from all over the country. So did his. Mel was there with Joan. I mean, it was just a wonderful day. You know, to see something on display from the three of us that all donated something worth a lot of money. Yes. And well, I want to uh, personally thank you publicly, both of you. Well, all three, because I, I know Mel's around here somewhere. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, for the contributions you've done. Um, one 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 other thing I wanted to, to talk about, because you, you helped spark something that's become even bigger. Uh, than even I thought. And uh, you, you may not know this, Terry, uh, but um, <clears throat> right now there's an exhibit at the Museum of Indian Art and Culture, and it's based on native glass. Where is that? At, at, on Museum Hill here, Museum of Indian Art and Culture okay. here in Santa Fe. And there's a, they actually just published the book. But um, it blew rain with your guys' help in collecting, started a movement of contemporary native glass through Preston Singletary. And uh, one of those uh, conduits for the success of that was through Blue Rain and the incorporation of collaboration with Preston and Tammy. And that started something that has really grown here. And uh, I know Terry had a hard time giving up some of his art, but one of those most significant pieces that were made was that big black and white pot. Right. And that's in that exhibit currently. Wonderful. Yeah. So you, you'll want to go check that out. But yeah, you guys were one of the first to really get behind that as well in the glass part. Yeah. And, and we uh, collect. My wife and I had about seven from Preston. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but we donated all those to the Idol Jerk Museum because they really were looking at something. This is incredible. We mm -hmm. want to display this stuff. Yes. One other thing, all my rugs. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the rugs. Also. And those are a lot from Steve Getzweiler. Most of them are all. Yes. Well, yes. yes. He had many. He mm -hmm. still has some. I, I let the museum have the whole thing. Right. At 27 
major roads. Major roads. They never had any before. Yeah. I was trying to give them stuff that would ex expand what the Iowa Jord could do. Right, because in the beginning, they were mostly Western heritage, right? And then you guys really pushed on the native contemporary uh, on them, and they probably have one of the best collections because of you guys, because of the three of you. Uh, currently, they never, I think it would rival even the Herd Museum at this point. Their success has been extraordinary. Yes. With the expansion and all these, there's a lot of other people who were friends of the Idle Jord who have also made donations. Right. In collections. I remember Helen Kirstein was one of those, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So she was a. Uh, a Blue Rain supporter from the infancy as well. And uh, yeah, and, um, again, I want to thank all of you guys for do your donations and your passion uh, for the Native community and collecting, and especially uh, your camaraderie and the camaraderie I have shared with you as well. So, well, let's leave it there. I want to thank you guys for coming today and particip participating in Blue Rain Gallery podcast. I'd um, like to encourage everybody to subscribe to our podcast on all the platforms uh, from Spotify to I've iTunes. been watching some of them. They've been good. When I have time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you guys want to check out the late, the last one on uh, Stetson Honey. I'm told that was I pretty saw good. That, that yeah. was very good. Yeah. Now, my son-in-law is going to send out, as soon as he finds out when this is going to be showing, mm -hmm. he's just going to send out something to the whole family. Oh, nice. yeah, yeah. Uh, when when Leia gets all this together, we will do so. I'd like to encourage everybody, maybe because uh, Terry actually helped me produce the Blue Rain Gallery printshop.com, where we have art for everyday life. And uh, this business has uh, blessed a lot of our artists, especially our artists that are struggling. And I'd like to encourage everybody to, so to uh, go to that platform and see what we have. We have some great product. Lu Luann's been looking at these purses. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, the purses are, they're great. So yeah. she'll, when she comes over, you can show her. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys and uh, have a good day. <laughs> thank you, sir.